Hello, and welcome to the Iceman channel. In today's episode, we will talk about a possible way to overcome the fact that the Proxmo client is a command line interface, a CLI. Wouldn't it be good to be able to programmatically control the client? Let me show you what is possible today. We've all been here in the Proxmo clients and we've all been executing commands like this. That's nice, but we do it from inside the client. We also have some scripts where we can run external script files inside the Proxmo client, which is nice. It supports both Lua and Python and um, some native uh, Proxmo commands if you just type them up in a text file. But that's not what we're aiming for. We want to do it the other way. We don't want to be inside the client. We want to be in Python to do this. In order to do that, we need to do some things. And to start with things off, we need to go into the client folder. If you, if you like me, are curious and start looking at things, and when you're looking here, you see a folder called experimental lib. The experimental lib is a project that Philip Turvin and I was doing a couple of years ago, mostly him actually. And he came up with an, uh, a software that was like amazingly interesting. It's called Swig. It takes and makes wrappers around your code. So if you have C code, it makes wrappers about that into different other languages. So in order to run this, you need to install Swig. And in order to install Swig, you need to do a little bit other things. Here we go, let me do this. Let me jump over here. Swig.org is the place where you find it. And anything based on 4.0 is good to do it. And like you see here, Swig just generate wrappers in a pretty cool way. So you can go to Python, PFO and Perl. So you can actually make a whole heap of this just out of the box with this software. And we implemented for Lua and Python and C. Now in order to install that, you can go and get the latest at the GitHub where we have here releases. They are on 4.1.1. And I know that my Ubuntu is on 4.0.2 and that's good enough. That means I need to get down to my terminal again and I will show you how to do this two seconds again. So in order to get Swig installed, you need to search for it for you find it called here in my one. So mine is 4.02. That's good enough. So if you want to do that, you would need to install it. I already done this, but I'm just showing you how it's done. And that's it done. When you've done that, you can do Swig version, and you see you have it here. Great. That's one thing that you need to install. Secondly, that you need to install is on the Proxmark repo, you need to go down and look at your source code installation. We're looking at Linux right now, so I'm heading down there. And what you need to know is the following, lib python free dev, all right? This is what you need to install. So if you install this lines here when you did it, you don't have any issues, you already have it. But if you're not, you need to install this. Makes sense. Let me get back here. Now, in the experimental lib, Philip did some amazing things and doing some nice uh, shell scripts to help in doing this. But first of all, uh, it's numbered. Why so you know which way in, <laughs> in the which order to run this? You can look at them. It doesn't do very much, but it does this. There's some special commands in the make file in the client in the step there above that enables things. So you just run it with this. Mm 
Rapid found, rapid found, Python found, Ooh, and done. So, great. It's up to date. This is how it should look like, right? Now, next one is either from lib or continue. We will do from zero one. Well, let's, let's look at it. Right, it just make a build, make it, yeah, pretty much solid, right? We can recontinue, but I'm doing this so you can see it, how it looks like, what it should look like. Goes pretty fast. So when we're compiling this now, we are making a shared library for, for this, the proximal client. This is what's happening now. And you see that here. So the lib pm3r gerw4 so shared object. So that's there. And we're done here in the sense of what we need to do in the first part. Next part here is Philip added three different folders for examples. And what we're going to show right now is heading into the example for Python. So, ooh, let's see, that's our, ooh, ooh, I didn't clean up this before, let's do this for you, then, so you don't have to see this. Uh, okay, ignore what you just saw. <laughs> this is what it should be like. Uh, same thing here, you have a number of the shell scripts that you need to do. If you want to look what's happening going on, it doesn't happen very much. But it goes back into the build folder on the uh, folder in the catalog bef uh, above this one. And goes into the build folder and makes a soft link, a symbolic link into here. So it's reachable from here. That means that we now have access to this in here. Next time here, uh, Philip made a little shell script to show and how to run it. It just says that the bash, it runs from bash with shell script. Ignore this because it's all come out. And this is the important part here. What you need to do in order to run Python, you have to add this thing here, and that's the script that you want to call the Python from. All right, so what's in test.python then, you wonder? Well, it's kind of simple. Run Python, import pm3, open up. This is my uh, serial number, if you didn't see it before, my serial port or com port was a nine, uh, so in VSL1, it translates to TTS9. And it says like const command run status and then just yes, give us this object back. So this is Python objects, right? If we run 0 to run test shell, which is this, it starts Python, execute this HV status and prints it. Pretty simple, but you're running it from inside of Python. Next thing you have a shell script called run interactive, but now you're running IPython. If you install iron Python, you can do this as an interactive test instead to show you more how it looks like. If you hook it up like that, it will run the same HV status as before, but right now we have access to the peer console like this, and we can just run any command that we want, like this. So, interesting, huh? And uh, control D to accept. Yes, so quick, thank you. So, you can actually run uh, Python, uh, the proximal client as a shared library into using the Swig wrappers into Iron Python. Yes, call it like that. Amazing. <laughs> but it's not fun enough. Uh, the most funny part is not just to run it, it's also to be able to grab the text or um, take the response back. Otherwise, normally when you interact with uh, Python and Proxmo client is that you start a serial port object. 
So you like pexpec, you, know, you open up pexpec in Python, you open up the COM port and you do that way. But this is not it, this talks directly to the Proxmark shared library object. Now, in the next sample we did is the test.grab instead, which looks like this. And it also uses a grabber Python. Grabber Python comes from um, another place. Uh, I think it got from Stack Overflow, I'm not sure. But it does take the, the output, what we saw before from inside Python and enable it to capture it and look like it. So you can look here, you can say grab it, run the HV status, and then in the Python object of out, you get the capture text split by line number, new lines, and then compare it and then print that line. So if we run it like this, run tests rubber, it will not show you the whole thing. It will only show you that part where we're looking for, which would have been this one, right? So now you have access to take things inside of Python, you know, you can run Python or Proxmo commands directly in Python, do all this Python stuff you want to do, don't have to think about things, and that's what you do. Gives you a whole heap of better of status. You're still inside of uh, interactive here, so I can do this. Boink. Yes. What I don't have is, of course, complete access to the responses. But that's the limits of this, what we got here. Now, in order to show you what more to do this, I was playing around today and I made a new script, Python script, I call it ISLF search. And in order to make it a little bit funnier, I made it do a little bit bigger and it does the grabber thing, but it also does forcing of, of parameters in. So if you can, you know, you want to send a file name in, say which serial port you have using because you don't want to do it. You can do that. You can grab things that you want to do and you can go and look for anything else. And this one is a little bit funny. It just looks for a valid tag. So remember what I said, zero to run test shell that you need this part. So if I do this and then I, oops, drop because it's locally, I do that, and this is what it does instead, because it looks for valid, and valid is the output, I can't show you that, but that would be the card that I'm using right now, on the proxmark that I'm laying down here. So that's what you can do with Python right now, you can run commands inside of Python natively, in that sense. It makes sense. But would be nice, you know, with a swig, you get this ability to do this for several other places. And yes, uh, like we said, we did also add a Lua because we had Lua before. But um, Philip also added examples to do it for C. So you can actually build now new softwares based on this shared library. Also here inside the example C folder, you will see the numbers shell script. If you look at the zero one, it tells you right now I made another one called grab. So I normally would show you this. It has the threading, it has uh, the linking to the build folder we said before. Here's the name of a shared library. Also in code folders where we have other shared things before. This is the code source code that we want to compile and this is the output. So test will be the name of software that you wrote and this is your GCC compiler. I also added a test grab. So this is not normally I will commit this later on but it's not there. And if you look into the test.c file, you see it does this, include pm3 main, here's your pm3 object or struct, you open it, this is my uh, serial port or com port, 
this is what I want to run and then you close it. So if I now make file test, this makes the compilation of the software. If I now run to run test, because I just want to do the first one, I do this. And now you're running a new software calling the Proxmo client and running that command. Now that's why we were today and I, in preparation of this video, was a little bit surprised and I was like, ah, in the other folders we have a grab example where you can grab part of the text. Now for C that was a little bit more complicated, so uh, I you know, took out the chat GTP and then uh, a little bit googly. And I um, came up with, oh, not that one, of course. I uh, came up with test with the source file. Whoop, grab dot C here. Uh, a little bit more piping. In C, you need to pipe things. So you have to pipe the two file descriptors. You have a receiving buffer. You create a pipe. You fork this uh, software. And then you run from the client and with a child that you fork. Forking means you run the main software and then you make another thread of it and it continues running there. So now you have two objects and then you say execute the Proxmo console things that we said before and send it to the main so it can collect it. And that's what's happening here And this one. It takes that, you duplicate the pipes, close that, runs the, open up the Proxmo in the child runs the HF status and then goes back inside of uh, uh, the main thread uh, and does this little magic there. And now I'm also looking for a unique ID like I showed you before for Python. And if I look and test grab, uh, yep. And here's the thing, no, yeah, more zero two. I can either do it like this, I can over do zero two, ah, oh, have this. Run test grab, I can do it like this. Like we did before, collect that one, or I can do grab here. We can see that the interesting part is that you need to have a linking library path saying to the build in the previous folder up above. So if I do this instead, that's all I need to do to run it and boom. So that is what's possible today. I think that's kind of amazing. Uh, I should actually just you know, commit this grab code. Uh, okay, let's grab. Okay. Uh, Grab C. Uh, yeah, let's add those to there. Let's add over zero make test file. Let's commit a C sample of grab. Add it push wrong, of course, and it's pushed kind of cool. Yes, so with that said, I hope you enjoy this little. And side thingy into what you can actually do very much more with the Proxmark that we are able. And it's not always just running client, we did very much more fun. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know in the comment below if you have questions about it and you know if you want to you know, uh, enhance it or improve it, sure. There are more technical aspects. You need to look in the source code file and you would look for something called pm3.i and pm3.c files in the source files for the client in order to make it, you know, improve it. But uh, yeah, I think it's an excellent way. Uh, there are some limitations currently, of course, but um, I think it's just amazing that you can run it from inside of those things. Hope you enjoyed it.